I'm Deborah Lou Harder, the new radio host of the Metropolitan Opera, and I am so thrilled to be here with an illustrious group of musicians. We have our music director, Yannick Nézé Seguin, composer Matthew O'Coin. We have principal clarinet Anton Rist, our new principal second violin, Jeremias Sergiano Velázquez, and our associate principal double bass, Lee Mesh. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. We are very thrilled about the upcoming se series of chamber music concerts that Met Orchestra musicians are doing at Weill Recital Hall at Carnegie Hall. I know you opened in October with a fantastic program featuring Angel Blue and also music of Wagner mixed with Terence Blanchard mm -hmm. and Louise Ferenc. Now coming up in November you have an equally intriguing program. So Yannick, tell me, why is it important for the Met Orchestra musicians to play together in a very intimate setting, such varied repertoire? So I believe it's first very important, I think, for New Yorkers and everyone coming to the Met who is experiencing such beauty from the pit, night after night in a varied repertoire, to also get to see on stage and meet the individuals behind that sound. You know, and an orchestra is a collective, but it's not one personality. It's a collection of incredible musicians. And, you know, we say it over and over again, and I say it, that the Met Orchestra is one of the greatest orchestras in the world. So it is composed by these fabulous musicians. And it is good in return also for musicians to be able to meet differently. You know, it's so difficult to be in the pit and have to listen all the time to the singers and it takes a lot of skills and you're never quite in an ideal setting. And as chamber musician, you can actually stop and talk to your colleague, not being from one end to the pit, uh, uh, of the pit to the other. And um, I get to also experience myself being there and sitting, you know, with them, which is a, a very different experience and which I love to think that opera is a chamber music at large, but we mm -hmm. know that in reality, it's <laughs> sometimes it's more traffic than, other th uh, than anything else. So that's why I think it's very important to have that circulation of energy and of a different um, focus and spotlight on our wonderful musicians. And we'll get to hear your individual voices, which is so exciting. Yeah. You're also going to be playing the piano which I know you love to do in a couple of pieces, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. I wanted to start out with Lee Mesh because you're going to be in um, the opening piece, which is written by a very intriguing composer, Erwin Schulhoff, who sadly his life was cut short by the Nazis, um, but he wrote in a very unique style. Could you just tell us a little bit about what captures you about his piece, The Concertino? whom you're going to be playing it with and yeah. what well, you like I've, about Yeah, well, I've known about this piece and forever, my whole life, my whole career, and this is the first time I'm playing it. So that wow. that's special to me because for the, the few ba uh, bass pieces we have that I've played many times over and over again, to have something new is really exciting. Uh, he was Czech, and there are a lot of folk melodies, and it's romantic kind of atonal and very rhythmic. So. And you're playing with Chelsea Knox, principal flute. Chelsea and, also and Milan. Milan, yes. principal <laughs> viola. So yeah. that, that'll be a, a great sound. Then next on the program, we have something brand new by Matthew O'Coin. Matt, do you want to describe your piece and uh, why you chose those particular parts of Eurydice to arrange for a smaller group? Sure, of course, we've got the, the Met premiere of Eurydice coming up in under two weeks. Mm. Um, and, you know, as Yannick said, uh, this is an orchestra of superstars. You know, they're people that you want to hear as, as individuals as well as in the fabric of, of, of the orchestral sound. So um, it was thrilling for me to, to kind of imagine uh, uh, the most vivid parts of the opera. Uh, the, one of the arias begins with a very prominent percussion introduction, and I think mm -hmm. that'll really crackle in, uh, in Vile Hall. Um, also, there, there are two of the big soprano arias. We have uh, our soprano soloist. Uh, in the case of the concert, it's Leave Red Path. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it sort of is like a, uh, it, it's an hors d'oeuvre. It's a preview uh, of, of the opera 
um, with a couple of its, of its highlights, yeah. So wetting the audience's appetite for the premiere of the actual opera at the Met. Exactly. Two days later. Mm -hmm. Anton, I know that you're going to be performing in that uh, particular arrangement. What can you say about Matt's writing for winds and your part? In I won't listen. You won't listen. <laughs> <laughs> You'll leave the room. Uh, so playing Matt's music, it's, um, it's so much fun and it's so engaging. And so often when we're um, presented with a new score that is unfamiliar to all of us, it's easy to sort of go into like a math solving mode and sort of work yeah. it all out mathematically so it's as accurate as possible um, and never really be able to let go and actually enjoy the music and enjoy playing it and sort of seeing where it takes you. And with Matt's music, even just the first time reading through it, it's so clear that that the, the characters, the, the engagement, the textures, the colors, it's all so accessible. Once, oh. you, work, once you work out the technical problems, which there are <laughs> a lot, yeah. um, <clears throat> everything falls into a groove and it becomes really fun and engaging to play and it sort of draws the performer in to see what they can do, how can they make the most of each little phrase. And I, I'm positive it'll do the same for the audience as well. So it's been, it's been really fun digging into it and we had a, a few weeks off from playing it and coming back to it, it's still, it still sort of resides in your bones and it's still there. Um, so it's been, it's been really, really wonderful getting to know it. Yeah. Yeah, this guy's a true genius, the same. <laughs> <laughs> Yannick, for you conducting the chamber version, does that reveal anything to you new in his score? So, um, Matt, I think you're a fantastic orchestrator, right? So, I mean, uh, a lot of what Anton just said, you know, I, I agree so much with it. It has to do with knowing how to write for the instruments. And I, I believe that people who are going to come at the Opera House and hear the full score will hear something where the colors will emerge from the orchestra and never quite in conflict with, this, with, with the, the vocal lines, which is often our problem here. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. talk about problem solving. I think in the pit, conductor and musicians, we have to always imagine the ways of the right color to support the line, not to over... Um, and it's much more complicated than too loud, too soft. You know, it's more detailed than this. And I believe that, Matt, you're setting the, the right, uh, setting us on the right direction with this. So back to exactly your question. I believe that e because you're such in good control of your, uh, of the uh, orchestration, the chamber music aspect will still reveal that color, that sense of color, but probably, I guess, draw more attention to the exact um, musical, purely musical content, mm -hmm. and not so much about the actual color. And one of the, one of the pieces you know, that uh, we're gonna play is the heart of the opera, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the, the centerpiece, the um, most beautiful aria, I mean, there's so many beautiful parts, but the most beautiful aria of it. And to hear it, only the first time I heard your music was working on it with you at the piano mm -hmm. and Aaron singing it, Aaron Morley, mm -hmm. who's singing it at the Met. And, you know, just with piano, it already was beautiful. So if you expanded the chamber, you are able to zoom in to the real music making, and then you come to the opera house and you have the full picture with the orchestration and, and, and the... It's a bit like having the sets there. You know, Are you talking about this is what it's like to love an artist? Absolutely. Which is so poignant. It is and, poignant. Um, it's such a great opera about loss of life, of love, identity, and language, and almost devastating when experienced through the music. So I'm sure the more the audience hears it, the more it's going to touch them, and especially to have this version for chamber ensemble and soprano. I'd like to talk just a little bit about the piece, Yannick, that you're going to be playing with Jeremias, about, uh, uh, written by one of the great American composers yes. who's finally getting her due. I want to um, extol you, Yannick, for bringing the music of Florence Price to a much wider audience. Could you just describe Florence Price for us and the piece that you're going to play? So I, I discovered for myself Florence Price through her symphonies. And when I first played an excerpt from her first symphony, I was blown away. And then I started researching about how she wrote four symphonies, three of which are, we can play now. The second, we know she composed it, but it's somewhere in an attic or mm. it's still somewhere, but we're convinced we can find it at some point. Um, she was from the, uh, the early uh, 20th century and she knew how to really take with her 
the baggage of the language of the European Romantic uh, composers, and yet she was able to blend this with such a sense, a melodic sense and a harmonic sense, truly rooted in American history. And her African-American heritage is obvious from her choice of instruments, for the fact that you know, she, uh, uh, instead of a scherzo, for example, she always uh, does a juba dance, which mm -hmm. is really quintessential American and from her culture. And she unapologetically, through her life, brought this to the, the, the forefront. And sadly, uh, two things were against her, her race mm -hmm. and her gender. Mm. And this is, this is the truth. And this is why it's so important for all of us to to now uh, make up for the time that, you know, collectively our music world has lost. And I'm so glad to see her music played more and more, the concertos and the symphonies, and I've just recorded the symphonies with Philly, but also the Met Chamber musicians. Also, that was obvious from the first concert, you know, their, their commitment, your commitment to having not only the music that everybody knows, but also what's off the beaten path, you know, what's Louis Farin last time and now mm -hmm. Florence Price. So I, that really warms my heart to see that everyone is embracing this responsibility. And Jeremias, you're going to be playing the solo part with Yannick uh, <laughs> at the piano of Adoration. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about first coming to the Met? Uh, I think it's your first season here. Yes. And uh, that experience, and then also playing Florence Price. So, yeah, as you said, it's my, my first season. This is like my second or third month here. Oh. Um, <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it's been nothing but amazing, really. Um, the, I absolutely love the repertoire and every, absolutely everything we've done. I, I, I really like it. I really love it. Um, and something that I really, really like here, how, how well everybody needs to listen at all times. And I guess because it's an opera, you know, and, and people need to be aware of so many things, the singers, and also every performance might be just quite a bit different. Yes. And <laughs> And there's a lot of uh, kind of sensing in each other. And I really, really love that about, about the Met. And I think it's a very chamber-like experience um, in, a, in, a, in, a big, in a big way. So I'm really excited to be, to be playing um, chamber music with, with Met musicians. I think um, people here just have listening in their DNA. Kind of. uh. It's it's a really it's a really fulfilling experience to me. It's a lot of music, a yes. lot of new music for me. <laughs> a lot of long nights too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless you've been in an opera orchestra before, mm -hmm. um, it's all new. I mean, I've I've listened to a lot of the the music before, but um, a lot of new music. But I, I'm having a blast. Oh. What do you find special about Florence Price's adoration? Is it adoring something? Um, well, it is. It is such a. It has such a natural singing quality, I think, and in adoration as well as in Deserted Island, she she really like, like Master said, he, yeah, and she, she mixes the some of like the Western traditions that we're used to, um, but also she adds a little bit of elements of uh, perhaps jazz and blues and some modal language, mm. um, um, harmonies, um, so it's really. It's, it's very touching music, in my opinion, and I'm very much looking forward to, to playing it with, with Yannick. It's going to be a, an honor, really, so I'm um, really excited for it. It's yeah. wonderful. I sense a lot of joy amongst all of you for this upcoming concert and just playing together. And no musician and composer is more joyful than Mozart, so <laughs> we know that, uh, Yannick, you're going to be playing the Mozart G minor Piano Quartet, one of the greatest pieces of chamber music for piano and strings. But it's quite a tour de force for the piano, almost like a piano concerto. Oh. <laughs> Please don't say <laughs> not, that. Not the <laughs> <pretty> <laughs> wrong, but, um, what are you looking forward to most so, in playing that Mozart? So, it truly is an honor for me to play with these musicians. Of course, it's an honor to conduct them, but it's an honor especially an honor to play, because piano playing for me has always been my most secret, not secret, people knew about it, but it's something I would not reveal, mm -hmm. and very rarely would do in public. 
Mm. And then thanks to, thanks or I don't know if I should, I should thank her, but Joyce Di Donato, ah. just before the pandemic, we did this project of Winterreise together. And mm. then she, of course, she's such a star. She said, we need to play this at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> the day I had to play Winterreise, play piano at Carnegie Hall, I remember being there and looking at the columns of the stage and said, if someone would have said, you know, for me to conduct at Carnegie, great honor. But in a way, with the career I have, I was kind of, you know, that's, I'm not one to say it's normal. I'm grateful for it, but you know, it's more expected. Mm -hmm. But playing piano? Am I worthy of this? So I did it, and then the pandemic gave me more time with the piano, reconnecting with it. And I, I did a recording with Rene Fleming, and this led to another thing. And so, your solo, uh, your and solo, my solo album, album too. too. Not to mention. But I mean, <laughs> it's still a part that I think is the most uh, vulnerable, Yannick. Mm. And for me, I do it with all my heart, with my colleagues, musicians here, because they invited me. And because, uh, you're right, I want to share the joy of really producing the sound. Us conductors, we're... It's so much fun to conduct, as you know, but it's also, at some point, we, it's good to be reminded what it takes to produce the sound itself and not being always in the position just to expect something to happen. And it's, um, so I find this very humbling, and I hope that the audience coming to it will, of course, hear our fantastic, it's going to be um, uh, Ben Bauman, uh, Milan Milazevich at the viola, and uh, Jerry Grossman at the cello, uh, hear them, these fantastic players. But yes, to hear the joy of Mozart and the, the vulnerable Yannick, just, you know, <laughs> happy to be uh, getting back to his roots with this. Oh. We can't wait. It's going to be a wonderful concert, wonderful opening of your opera coming up in just two weeks. And I want to thank all of you for spending the time to, to letting us know about what's coming up. That's November 21st, yes. a Sunday night at 730. And that series goes all the way into June. So lots to look forward to. I hope everyone joins in that time and for the rest of the year to hear the fantastic lit musicians. Oh, thank you so much, everybody.